Well, I guess we might as well get rolling. If you could uh, please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Planning Commission members present this evening. We have. Yeah, we're on. Okay. Um, Mr. Andre, Ms. Coulter, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Gellings, Mr. Yancho, Mr. Bush. From staff, we have uh, from planning and zoning, Mr. Jeremy Smith. And from our planning consultant, we have Ms. Jill Bame. <clears throat> Appreciate you turning in the cards. Um, might as well go right to that, right? Well, no, we got it. We've got it. Yeah, we've got. If you're not here for anything that's on the agenda, we'll give you a quick opportunity before we get into that. So, we do have on our agenda zoning case 677, which is Paragon Development Zoning Change. So, if you're here for that, that's going to come up in a minute. Um, but if there's anyone here that wants to address the Planning Commission on anything other than that, now would be the time. So we'll open that up if anyone would like to address the Planning Commission. Doesn't look like it. So we'll... Oh. Sure. Oh, could you step up, please? State your name and address. Yes, my name's Larry Mills. I live at 5177 Green Meadows Road, Grand Blank Township. Um, on this proposal that you guys want to do, it's like uh, what businesses do they really want to bring in here? What would it involve? What are you thinking? No. This, is, this is for later. This yeah, we're gonna, we'll kind of give a little bit of what could go in, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. for that. So okay, what? well maybe I'm out of order then here. <laughs> you're just that's a little okay. early. That's all. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Glad you're oh. here. Okay. All right. I'll Back to you. Later, then. Yep. Maybe you can answer. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone wants to speak, other than the zoning case. So we'll move on to approval of minutes, January fourth. Um, Mr. Chairman, I've gone over the minutes and I find them to be in order and I would make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Motion I, motion by Mr. Yancho to present. I will support. To uh, approve the minutes of January 4th as presented. Support by Mr. Anderson. Any other discussion? Not a vote is in order. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Approval of this evening's agenda. Any changes? If we could, uh, can we move from old business 6B? Can we move that to 7B or C? Um, just because I, we know that all these um, residents here are for the other things. So. All right, let's make it a 7. You want 7B to be 7C? Yeah. Or 6 6B. 6B to 7C. Yeah. I had a motion for approval. Support. Motion by Mr. Bush to approve the agenda as revised, revising item 6B to 7C. Mm -hmm. Support by, who was that? I missed it. My, my, me. Mr. Support by Mr. Yancho. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Agenda for this evening is approved 6 0. No correspondence here, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, I got an email from uh, Trustee Hugo. She'd like me to read something to the board, if I could. Sure. 
Um, she said, she, I would like to take the, a moment to publicly apologize for my absence at the board meeting and the planning commission meetings in December and January. Unfortunately, I've been dealing with some health issues and I've been able, unable to work. I have a few more tests and may end up having a third back surgery since December 1st. At this time, I will be unable to attend meetings in person. However, I'll be watching meetings online. Thank you for your time and thank you for your continued support. I saw that email come through. Thank you. Okay. Looks like old business would be the next item under agenda. Item 6A, site plan review extension. Correct? Mm -hmm. You want to tell us what that's all about? So this is back in uh, April of uh, 2022. We had, uh, this was preliminary approved. This is for the gas station and convenience store on Door Highway, the old GBI building. Uh, so this is preliminary approved. Uh, Mr. Nanoshi had other business elsewhere with another um, site. It, this is kind of fallen by the wayside and now he's looking to pick it back up. He's already was given a admin six month extension by myself and now he needs to come for his final six month extension that has to be approved by you folks if you see fit. So just to explain the procedure, <clears throat> you're given a one year up front, right? So they're given a year up front to commence building. They can't commence building in that year We've changed the ordinance in the last couple of months to give me authority to give another six months administratively. If they need an additional six months, so two months total, they have to come back before this board in order to get approved. So it'll be a two year total to con start construction. And if they don't start within two years, they've got yep. to start the whole start. process. They have to come back over, yep, and start back over, yes. I reviewed it, and uh, from what I recall, there's no changes to this. It's just the exact same plan you presented it for approval. Yes. Um, I would motion that we grant the site plan extension for an additional six months for the property on gas convenience store for Bird Highway. It was a motion by Mr. Anderson. Support. Support. Okay. There was support for that by uh, Mr. Bush. And did you get the site plan number? You want the number on that yeah. one? Sure. Um, case number 1100. Okay. Plan review number 1100. Right. Is that what you need on there? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Any discussion regarding that item? Yeah. Mr. Mr. Andre? Um, for staff, uh, I did see in your report there were several items that needed to be addressed through the preliminary that. Um, that were brought up have you had any correspondence or has the applicant made any updates or revisions to the comments that you had uh, provided to them not at this time okay just the just the contact of uh, we'd like to extend it but no updates to the plans that were required they haven't even submitted to any to any of the county agencies either so this kind of they got preliminary approval back in 22 and it kind of just was put on a back burner and forgot about and now it's they're trying to pick it back up okay and so just to clarify that six month this this requested six month extension requires permits in hand for to validate the the uh the site plan is that they correct would need uh, yeah permits applied for and granted by the building department yes okay thank you okay all right a vote is in order all those in favor signal by saying aye Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes 6 0. So we're running out of time, it looks like. Yep. All right, next item on our agenda would be new business, zoning case 677, Paragon no, Development. What about Tech Village discussion? Uh, no, we move that. Move that. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. All right, I'm usually wrong, but. No, I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> First time today. Paragon Development, uh, we will have a public hearing. Um, you want to give us a kind of an introduction on this one? Do we want to have the applicant go first and then give my spiel? Sure, yeah. that'd be good.
Good evening. My name is George Rizik, R I Z I K for the record, 9400 South Saginaw Street, Grand Blanc. Um, I represent the applicant, uh, Paragon, uh, present with me tonight, uh, starting from your left, moving to the right, is Lisa Eastwood, the project manager from Fleiss and Vandenbrink. Gerald Mansour is the uh, marketing uh, agent, and Jerry Odgan is the uh, officer for the applicant, Paragon. Um, we are requesting a uh, change on zoning uh, as set forth in the application. The uh, change is from uh, R1 to NC, R1 being single family residential, NC neighborhood commercial. Um, we went through, I think, the criteria at the last meeting. I'm just going to highlight these. So these people weren't here at the last meeting, so let's. Would you like me to make it a little more detailed? We have a presentation or anything that we'll be able to see on the screen, or no? No. No, I can go grab the future land use map if you'd like. Be good, just so everybody's familiar with where we're talking for sure. If there's any confusion. But Shall I wait then? Uh, it's just a map, so we'll go ahead. Go ahead. ahead. Okay. Um, in your uh, zoning ordinance, whenever you're seeking a zoning other than a conditional uh, zoning, there are 13 criteria that have to be addressed. Uh, one of those criteria, the last one is sort of a catch-all. It says whatever the Planning Commission thinks is important in addition to the 13 ob objective criteria that are set forth. So going through the 13, the first one, um, and always the most important one, is I think the consistency with the master plan. Your master plan calls for this area to be neighborhood commercial, and that's exactly what we're requesting. Um, and I've set forth in our application what the neighborhood commercial allows, um, at least as, as far as the, uh, the master plan. It's a, it's a land use category that allows local commercial uses, not large uses, uh, as a matter of right, not something that's 60,000 square feet, typically limited to 20,000 square feet or less. The important thing about neighborhood commercial for us on this is that our plan, even though there's, we're, not, we're not zoning to a plan or zoning to a specific use, our plan is that this probably will not be used for a lot of what we would consider commercial. And the change in your zoning ordinance over the past few months really makes it possible for us to do a, a lower, sort of a down-zoned use. Neighborhood commercial is now a cumulative district, which means we can do NC, PO, OS, and any sort of residential in there too. Um, and once again, although this is not in any plan that we've put before the Planning Commission or anybody so far, our ultimate uh, aim is to put some sort of possibly senior housing in there. Once again, um, caution that if it's NC, there's no guarantee that senior housing will get in there, but that's one of those things that can go in there and the reason it can go in there is because of the cumulative zoning regime. The next category is, is it compatible with the site's physical and geological and other physical um, um, prospects. There's 15 acres here, about 15 acres. Um, there's a um, wetlands of a little over, a, uh, just about an acre and a half, and a pond of about three acres. The, it's two tax parcels, uh, very rectangular in shape, deeper than they are wide. Um, physically, it'll accommodate any of the principal permitted uses in the NC district. The R1 limitation is going to be the pond up front and access to the road. As you know, whatever we do there, we're going to have to get some, um, you know, state of Michigan or DEQ permits to, uh, Eagle, sorry, uh, permits to uh, cross through the wetlands up front. You know, I don't know if we're going to bridge it or we don't know if we're going to have to fill. We're just not sure yet. That comes much later. So any sort of rezoning, this is the most preliminary rezoning I've ever seen because there's so much that has to be, has to be done on the site before anything can go in there. Even if you're going to put a single family house in there, there'd be a lot you'd have to do to get it in there. But it is compatible with the NC district uh, uses. The next uh, criterion is uh, the, essentially are we ask, we're asking, is a property as currently zoned uh, zoned for, not essentially non-use, but zoned in a, a fashion that the, there cannot be even a reasonable return on it. We've done a takeoff. It's attached as Exhibit C, I believe, to our uh, presentation. And that, or Exhibit B, I'm sorry. No, it's Exhibit C. And it shows uh, with an um, anticipated uh, take-up period uh, with the cost of uh, developing the property, um, how much we can expect to lose under current uh, zoning. The real problem here is that the road, um, once again, as I mentioned at the last meeting, 
we're talking about the, major, the majority of this road, the vast majority of this road, to get a road back there uh, involves a single loaded road. And for those in the audience who don't know what is a uh, single loaded, I'm sorry, it's an unloaded road. Some of it is single loaded. An unloaded road means um, you have a road going in and you have nothing accessing the road at all. The road is essentially a strip of land that you have developed with utilities and paving to get to a spot where you can develop. And so, you know, ideally for a, a developer who wanted to maximize his return, you would have a road and every inch of that road would have units on the side or uses on the side. This one, if you look at the uh, takeoff that we've done showing what can be done under, uh, under uh, current zoning, is we have an unloaded road most of the way, and then we have two cul-de-sacs in back that would accommodate housing. So, once again, not only do we not have a single loaded road, we have an unloaded road. That's what really makes this, this site difficult to develop and difficult to even make a buck on. Once again, we're not looking for maximum return, we're looking for reasonable return. And I think our takeoff and the, and the, uh, in the drawing and both the financial takeoff show that we can't make any money, not maximum money, not any money. The next um, factor is, is the use compatible with the uses in the surrounding area in terms of land suitability. We specified in our presentation the land around it, how it's zoned, and how it's presently being used. Um, we also, uh, this land is uh, consistent with the stated goals of the master plan that they want um, commercial and retail uses that serve the convenient, convenience of consumers of nearby residential areas. Um, and we think that the master plan kind of tells us what they want in this area and that it is compatible. Since the master plan is fairly new, it tells us what they want in the area and the master plan essentially says it is compatible with the uses in the area particularly with the developments down to the west on Baldwin Road. Next, we have to look at the utilities uh, and the infrastructure of the area to see whether or not the uses in NC are going to overtax those. That is, are the utilities in the area sufficient? Do they have sufficient capacity to service this? Um, according to master plan map number nine, uh, it says the township's public water system has a capacity to handle current demand and has ample room to serve more customers. There's a 10-inch sewer main um, at the road adjacent to the site and an 8-inch water main directly across the street from the site. According to the Grand Lane Township, it's called the Development Ready Map um, Portal. So we think there's sufficient capacity there. Of course, that site plan, depending on what type of uses are there and how many uses are there, um, we'll be able to determine whether or not those are sufficient for the t exact type of uses. But as for typical NC, there are sufficient, uh, there's sufficient capacity in the utilities. Then there's the capacity of the uh, street system. We have done a traffic study. It has gone in from Fleiss and Vandermeer. It's gone into the township. I think uh, Giffels may have uh, given some comment on it. And then there was a response by uh, Fleiss and Vandermeer. If you have any questions about that, uh, Lisa will be able to address that. She works for Fleiss and Vandermeer, of course. Then um, the apparent demand for the types of uses permitted in this area. If this rezoning is approved, um, this parcel will be purchased by, uh, will be I mean, used by the applicant for any one of the permitted in uh, neighborhood commercial uses. It will be consistent with the master plan. One potential use, as I mentioned, and the one that's really, that we really want on there is some sort of senior housing. Because we just don't see retail sitting that far back off the road on a single loaded road uh, on the backside of wetlands and water and expecting any sort of commercial to do well. So it would either be one of the less intense neighborhood commercial uses or a reduced use that is something below neighborhood commercial that is now, now allowed by your cumulative zoning. Um, we attached as Exhibit E uh, a study of the Grand Blank office market and we think that that supports rezoning uh, from a demand perspective. And I hope we've had a chance to look uh, that over. It's been in since November. Uh, the, the next criterion is whether the boundaries of the requested rezoning district are reasonable in relationship to the surroundings and, the con and if the construction on the site will be able to meet dimensional regulations. Yes, we uh, showed a conceptual plan, Exhibit F, to our, um, to our presentation that demonstrate that the site boundaries are reasonable and it shows what could be done on the site. Once again, we're not zoning to that plan, but that's a plan that could work on this site. Once again, no guarantees as to what's going to be on the site. The entire spectrum of NC uses could be on, be on the site. And I know that 
uh, Mr. Swick will probably you know, um, educate the, the audience here as to what those could be. Next it says, if a rezoning is appropriate, um, is the requested rezoning district considered to be more appropriate from the township's perspective than some other zoning district? In other words, if the zoning district we're asking for, in other words, if the property should be rezoned, is there a different rezoning that we should be asking for than this one? Um, we think that because this parcel is master plan for neighborhood commercial, I believe it was a 21 master plan, um, it is appropriate for neighborhood commercial zoning. Other zoning classifications could accommodate similar uses, but this is the lowest category that would, um, would accommodate them. That is, we don't want to go GC and then say we're going to put 60,000 square foot shopping center in there, but I mean, it could do that, but we're going to put something less because we don't want to make that promise. Make us GC and we'll go with some lower use. Once again, NC is the lowest possible zoning district that accommodates the uses that we're looking for on the site. Um, the next criterion is if the request is for a specific use, is rezoning the land more appropriate than amending your zoning ordinance to allow our use? Well, once again, it's not for a specific use. We would never ask you to change your entire zoning ordinance for all NC districts or all uh, R1 districts just because of our site. So that's not even a consideration. We don't believe that particular uh, standard is a consideration here. Will the request create uh, an isolated or unplanned spot zone? No, the answer is no there because uh, the master plan plans it. So it's not an unplanned spot zone. The master plan calls for this to be there. I think Mr. Hoffman at our last meeting was kind of scratching his head and he said, Isn't, aren't, they ask, aren't they doing exactly what we're asking them to do? Uh, in the master plan. The master plan is asking us, asking people to make this neighborhood commercial, to seek rezoning neighborhood commercial. Isn't that what they're asking for? So it, it cannot be said to be unplanned because it is in fact planned by the township for this use. Um, the next one is a sort of a, there's a one year elimination period uh, where they don't want us coming in asking for rezonings, getting rejected and then coming back within a year. So um, the request has not previously been submitted within the past one year. So we, we meet that standard as well. Um, the next one is an offer of conditions. If it's conditional rezoning, this is not a conditional rezoning. Um, other factors deemed appropriate by the Planning Commission is that catch-all that I was uh, mentioning. If you have any uh, other conditions or any other criteria you think are applicable, we're glad to address them. I can address them. Lisa, Jerry, or Jerry can address them. as well. So that's um, a squib of, of what I presented in writing to you. If you have any questions of, of me, or if the audience has any questions that you want to defer and then have us answer, glad to do it. Thank you. Any questions yet before we go to our planning and zoning administrator? Jeremy, we're going to go to you, but I want to, I guess, just be clear if audience members have come here looking to find out a particular use that's going here, we're likely not going to find out this evening. This is being rezoned without a uh, conditional use. It's not being rezoned to a particular plan that's been presented to us. So there's a little bit of fogginess, I guess, to a certain degree. But Mr. Smith can address what kind of things can go in there. As part. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Reisig pretty much went through my whole review uh, item by item and answered everything that was in my review as well. Um, the, as far as there are no site plans to date, uh, we have no site plans. Uh, as Mr. Reisig also alluded to, um, they're going to have to traverse that pond, and that's going to be their main challenge. Uh, so that's going to take state approval through EGLE, it's the old MDEQ. Um, some way, somehow, to traverse that before any <laughs> site plan can be approved or any, anything can be developed over there. One site plan, four lots, whatever, there will have to be some sort of agreement with EGLE to, tra to traverse that. Um, as far as what can and can't be permitted there, uh, Mr. Reisig also alluded to that. Offices, retail, 120,000 square feet, banks, Restaurants under 100 person, uh, rental videos, not that we have really a need for rental videos anymore. <laughs> uh, daycares, community facilities, churches, parks, central services, um, and accessory uses to those things. 
uh, then there's those are permitted uses. Special land uses is where we can add more conditions. If a site plan comes through and one of these special land uses comes through, then we can add additional conditions on top of it. Um, retail up to 60,000 square feet, automobile, gas station, auto service center, outdoor cafe, eating areas, restaurants with drive throughs um, recreation, lawn and garden centers, uh, vet clinics, and accessory uses, tanning salons, accessory uses to what's already been said. The items that you just mentioned, as a matter of right, if this is rezoned, they will not automatically be allowed to provide those items. That second Put list. Those items on here. Yes, those second items are special land use and require an additional <coughs> approval to the site plan. Okay. Special land the special land uses have to be permitted, yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, um, yeah, I'd just like to remind the audience that we don't make the final decision on this zoning change. We make a recommendation to, to, the, township board, yes. to the township board. So um, just wanted to make sure that people understand. Yeah, I was just going to say, is there anything else you want to say about the procedure process here? Um, there's a rezoning request in front of us. We review the information, make mm -hmm. a decision, and then make a recommendation to the township board. Correct. As it has been presented to me, this is one of the most thorough rezoning cases that's ever been brought before me in my tenure here in my career. Um, they've done all their due diligence. The Planning and Zoning Department would support a recommendation to the Township Board for approval um, because it, it meets the spirit and intent of the ordinance. And this is in within the DDA district. And as evident on our um, future land use map, this is what is being called for in that area. Mr. Um, I'd like to know what the process would be or what for any of these uh, future land uses or construction of these various items that you went through, what would the process be for before they could begin construction? For site plan approval? Yeah, site plan approval. So before they... You're talking if they if they get granted to, to traverse that pond, if Eagle permits it. So they would present a uh, site plan to me. I would review it, and then depending on if it's a permitted use or special land use depends on which board would see it. If it's a permitted use, our site plan review committee would review it. If it's a special land use, the ordinance requires that it comes before this board for the special land use approval and for the site plan approval. Anything else at this point? I think what I'd like to do is go to the public and get some feedback. Mr. Yancho, you've got some... Uh... Yes, do you want me to call him? And... Yeah. Uh, so we have a request from Larry Pack on Warwick Meadows. Sure. Would you like to respond? Our, uh, our property uh, backs up directly and adjacent to this new proposed land use. We are the most affected, and uh, our neighborhood is too. And uh, when we originally bought our house and built our house where we did, um, we looked at um, uh, the parcel and, and the location based on um, privacy and uh, proximity to uh, the freeways. I'm a physician. I had to have access to the freeways to get to McLaren and, uh, and Hurley and Genesis. So that was part of our uh, decision making. Uh, and um, uh, this has been zoned as residential, this area. And um, I, I think that it should stay that way, and uh, there's no reason homes could not be built in that area. Uh, it could be very, very, very well done, and you wouldn't have to worry about traversing the pond, and uh, uh, it would, uh, I think it would enhance uh, the community, and especially our neighborhood. Personally, I think Bramblank Township is a hodgepodge of development. There's, uh, there's really no theme. It's just here and there. There's commercial here. Uh, there's, uh, uh, you know, the, the new uh, park that uh, Wynn Cooper put together. 
you know, those are big buildings. I certainly wouldn't want those in my backyard. Uh, I don't think you would. I think you guys should think about Warwick Hills and the, the, the community in general around there. It's a residential community. It's probably the nicest residential community left in, in uh, the county. And to put uh, a commercial development back near our home or near my neighbor's homes, I think is insane. And um, young people need, uh, they need homes. Uh, they need uh, places to live to get to uh, this um, uh, park that's being considered, um, this tech park south of Baldwin Road, this would be great for them. They, they could buy an electric car and get to work and not worry about it running out of electricity. And um, it's already zoned for that, and I just can't understand why you want to change it and ruin our neighborhood. Uh, and I think my neighbors will probably speak to that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sure. And I'll just let you be next. Uh, Spencer Spencer Howell oh, of uh, 5217 Green Meadows. Yes. Uh, um, I, like many of my neighbors, have a lot of questions. I think you guys have answered a lot of questions, but I also think that the developer himself has acknowledged that there are no answers to the main questions that we would have and concerns that we would have as neighbors to this proposed development. Um, it, and I understand it's not a proposed development, it's a proposed uh, uh, change of the zoning. Um, I share uh, Larry's sentiments as far as, uh, you know, just right within this area, there are quite a few already pre-approved areas for what it is that they're you know, proposing. Obviously, I think anybody that's in the land development business realizes that the parcel on the right-hand side and the parcel on the left-hand side of this property would be uh, very uh, valuable to them, which right now there's a defunct house that's halfway built and another on the other side is a, is a really nice house, but you know not a million dollar home. And so you know, buying one of those two parcels, I believe, would solve their way around the pond. But I'm sure that the folks here are very sharp. I'm having a look at you know, the team here. I think they've probably gone through and contacted both landowners and probably tried to buy both parcels or if not one of the parcels to solve their problem. Um, I guess one of the questions I had for Mr. Smith and for the board is um, what's to stop uh, or what, what, what is a dispensary considered as far as a retail shop? Is it just a generalized like dollar store or is there actual some special use in Grand Blake Township that says, you know, if you want to open a dispensary, you have to have a special use? So the nice thing about Grand Blake Township is, is that we have a moratorium on any kind of marijuana. Ah. We don't allow that period at the end. Okay, well, that was the main concern of my wife's, anyways. I should be happy <laughs> to hear that. Um, but um, I think the only thing missing here for the folks that are maybe in front of us is context as far as the map and for you to be able to see where I live, where Mr. Pack lives, where Mr. Schoen lives, where, you know, in relation to this property. And I think it would, you know, provide some context. I didn't, of course, bring that with me, but. Um, we have a map that we can use to... We have a land use map. It's a real tiny map. I just, you know, as far as, uh, you know, having one that's a little more blown up. But we, I wasn't really prepared for that. This, but thank you for your time. I'll, I'll let these folks uh, voice their concerns as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I have a card from John... I'll mess this up. <laughs> Her Herenovich. Yes. Junior, An easy on Sunland Drive. <laughs> First of all, gentlemen and lady, uh, thank you for allowing me to address this uh, great body. Uh, in the late 60s and the early 70s, we worked very hard in a township to develop a master plan. There were a number of meetings, there was a tremendous amount of input, and people worked really hard. And the 
township essentially entered into a contract with the people that this is the way it was going to be when we went forward. I don't think we should be changing this now for the reasons that have been presented. The second point I want to make is that before my dear parents bought the property that we now live in, we went around and checked to make sure what the uh, zoning was. It was all R1 commercial, so we went ahead and uh, uh, purchased the property. Now, 50 years later, people want to change it. Uh, that is not fair to the people that made decisions with the rules that were in effect at that time. What this amounts to is peninsula zoning. We're going to have a situation where we're going to have R1 properties all around us. Now, we did this on East Hill Road with the apartment complexes and the R1, and you know the mess that we got into there. What this is going to lead to is other uh, rezonings and, and so on and so forth. It's a very poor idea and very poor planning to stick one piece of different zoning in the midst of a large piece that's already there. Now, if this property is rezoned, it's going to change the environment that we live in. What we've got to look at, parking lots, lights, etc., etc. And that is not good for our uh, subdivision. This will also, the next point, will also lower the values of our home. Because if people wanted that, they would have did that in the beginning. And it was, you know, it's been like this for, well, we built the house in 1976. So it's been a, a, a ton, of, uh, ton of years. The other point I want to make is that the Warwick properties uh, that Dr. Pack represented so well earlier are really a jewel, not only for Genesee County, but also for Grand Blanc Township. How are we going to attract people in the future to build things like that when we're going to turn around and change the zoning right next to them? That's going to have a cold dampening effect on the development of the township. We've got a choice here, folks. We can go with outsiders that are looking to make large sums of money. Uh, they don't really care about the master plan. They want to change it. They don't care about what the uh, opinion of the people is. Every person that I've talked to in our neighborhood said they don't want this. You know, we came here under certain conditions, and the conditions have been that way for a long time, and we want them to remain that. Uh, Let's see. These people are willing to sell the future to make some profit off some land that should be used as R1 residential. Uh, if we have a choice here, if you vote no, you will reinforce the trust that the people have put in a township because when they bought their homes and checked this property, it was R1 and it, and it should stay that way. And the people in this area are following the rules. They're living by the plan. We made a plan. We all agreed to it. And we're living by it. Uh, okay. This, when we do these spot zonings, it makes the township a less desirable place to, to live in. Uh, it just is, that's why we put a whole master plan uh, in, in, in place to guard against things like this. You know, we, the residents here care about the future. Uh, they are the ones that have made this township such a wonderful place to live in because of the investments they made and spent their whole lives uh, paying uh, for these investments. If you care about our long-term residents and the future of our township, you will turn this zoning down. Thank you for hearing me. May I answer any questions? Mr. Chairman, I just have a quick question. Where do you live in relation to the property? I live right on the corner. It comes right up against the corner of our house. Now, in Dolores, when we do zoning like this, there's going to be other cases in the future because the people that live there, they're going to want to change. And what this is all about is making a whole bunch of money off a piece of land that should be residential. And by the way, I've talked to, and our subdivision is probably 50 people. I don't know how many I've talked to, but not a single person in that subdivision supports this kind of a change. 
We, we feel a contract was signed with the township uh, when we made the master plan, and we should live by it. We've lived by it, and everybody else should live by it. Thank you for hearing me. I, uh, Thank you for your comments. Uh, And everybody to keep their comments in three minutes. All right, we'll try. <laughs> yeah, as you were speaking, I, I remembered that it's been a while since we've done a rezoning, and, yeah. and uh, comments can take a little longer. So we can try to. It's hard sometimes to get them in within three minutes. But I have a David Sahone. Is that did I say that right? Oops. <laughs> 9300 Warwick Meadows. It's me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to share some uh, concerns and some thoughts. Um, first, Green Knolls neighborhood established in the 60s. It boasts uh, diverse home design, modern, mid-century, and traditional. Our community, this community, is a mix of old, re young, old retirees and families of different backgrounds, making it a fantastic and friendly place, and I mean it. Uh, residents take pride in their homes, lawns, and overall landscape. It's a great area for walking, socializing, and everybody seems sincere when we wave uh, or drive by and wave. We all do it. I, I love it. Um, the reason I'm reaching out to the board, um, this is to express concern about rezoning Baldwin Road, of course. Um, I suggest looking at areas along Saginaw Street for rezoning if you really think we need it. Um, why rezone when we already have various shops, sandwich places, and restaurants within a few miles? They're also available retail spaces for sit-down restaurants and even... Uh, you know, these uh, special care homes, there's quite a few of them in Grand Blanc, and it's fantastic. Uh, um, again, I think there's a lot of space for sit-down restaurants already that don't need rezoning. It seems to me that there are people in Grand Blanc saying we don't have enough sit-down restaurants. I would agree, but I don't want them in my backyard. Um, my worry is that the push for rezoning is tied to the Tech Village project, attracting investors looking for quick profits. Um, you know, I looked up this property. It was bought in 2018, and it seems like that was the last time we thought that uh, Tech Village was going to take off. I don't know if I'm right about that. Um, well, I understand this business perspective, it will negatively impact longtime residents in our neighborhood with noise, light, and traffic pollution. Um, my wife and I moved to Green Knolls three years ago, attracted by the existing zoning plan and Tech Village, which includes residential zoning from our neighborhood directly to Baldwin Road. Let's make sure we rank the well-being of our tax base payers over the short-term gains. I, I think it's important. Um, I'm sure you do too. Um, moreover, bringing the high paying jobs without planning housing locally seems counterproductive. I know we have the new industrial uh, area, which I think is pretty cool. Um, not sure I like the hydrogen battery storages that close to our residents, but it sure looks cool. And I know it's bringing in a lot of jobs. Um, but the people that are going to be taking on these jobs need to live somewhere, and we don't want them living in Clarkston and then working in Grand Blanc. At least that's what I think. Um, you wrap it up pretty soon. Here. Yeah, sorry. And I, I thought even the developer should only talk three minutes. I was surprised <laughs> that we were being pushed by Jeremy, and no one said anything when they were up here, which was a long time, it seemed like. Um, uh, uh, let's see this. Um, so finally, the fair, fairly new Grand Blanc Township DDA appears to be driving recent projects. Well, some are beneficial. The appointed, not elected, and maybe I'm wrong about that, but is the DDA appointed? Seems like that's what I read. Is that right? Yes. So it seems like they're doing a lot of the pushing, and I know some of those members, and they're great people, but they have... 
uh, monetary interest in some of the projects and even this one. I mean, it borders, the DDA uh, lines border some of their properties that they own. So I think there's a fine line between community improvements and personal gain at the community expense. I feel this idea to rezone these parcels on Baldwin Road, which border our awesome neighborhood and were previous planned by our community planners as residential need to stay intact. I really do, I hope you guys do it. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> I have a request from Larry Mills on Green Meadow. You're good? I, yeah, I had my question to ask Larry Mills. They pretty much said the same thing that I did. I don't want to know. Thank you. Uh, this is the last card I have. It's from Joe Kaczys Kaczynski. Yeah. Is that right? Joel Kaczynski, I live at 5212 Sunland in the Green Knowles neighborhood, and we bought the property um, because we loved this, the location, we loved the, the woods behind us, the wetlands, the wildlife. Uh, we have deer in our backyard sometimes. Um, it's just not matched anywhere in any of the more developed areas, and we are concerned that uh, for going to NC on any of those properties on Baldwin Road would affect those woods, the, the wetlands, the wildlife habitat uh, that we bought the property because we fell in love with. Thank you. Thank you. Is that the extent of cards? That's all the have? cards I have. Unless anyone's going to sign up real quick. Ah, there we go. <clears throat> Allegria Pagio. 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 Thank you. On Green Tree Drive. Yes. <clears throat> I moved here in 1974. I must be the oldest among all these people here. And we fell in love with our property as soon as we saw it. And my children grew up here. And now they're gone, except for my oldest son, who is with me. Um, we love that place. We fell in love with it. When we moved, we were only 11 homes in that subdivision. So you can imagine why we loved it. Because there is peace and quiet. It grew. And we love it too because everybody are kind and we get along in that area. <clears throat> I do not want an inclusion from somebody we do not know. Um, I bought a parcel, we bought, my husband and I bought a parcel and why we loved the quiet place, we bought both sides of my house. So I, please, I do not want any more inclusion. We would like to know who these are. I would like to know what they are planning to do. I think they owe it to us that we would be, I wasn't here, whatever meeting you guys had in the past. This is the only time I'm here because Dr. Pak approached us. I think the meeting previous was just to kind of introduce to us what they wanted to propose and get it formally on the agenda. That's I understand. All it was. It just... I understand. I do understand. So I am here speaking to you how we love that place. You know, I bought one and bought two more because we want privacy. So if you introduce some noise somewhere around close to us, I live close to Dr. Pack, and I live also close to that corner where the pond is. So I hope you guys will reconsider whatever is being proposed. 
Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. All right. I think we've heard from everyone that's turned in the card. Oh, come on up. Thank you. My name is Tom Both. I live at 5189 Sunland, which is right across the street from where the uh, uh, development would occur. If I look at the land on Baldwin Road, I see nine big parcels, and I can see where these 15 acres, the other seven, would be coming up in the future to also go to NC, destroying what we've really uh, counted on for the, uh, the homes that we've had. I've been in the area since 1985, and we raised our family there. We're enjoying retirement there, and as I, my, the rest of my neighbors talked about, we really enjoyed the, uh, the environment, the neighborhood that we have. When I walk through the neighborhood, we see turkeys, we see deer, we see wildlife that with these plans, I could see disappearing. So I thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Now we will pull up, close the public comment portion of the meeting. Harder to say than it looks. Um, I don't know if the applicant wants to uh, make any follow-up statements based on what he's heard, or that's you don't have to. Okay. I guess planning commission members have any. Mr. Chairman. You have yes. to open and close the public hearing too. Officially. Officially. So you can open it now and then talk about it and then you can close it if you like. But we have to officially have it open and close on the record. Okay, I thought I did that, but I can't say it. I do believe I heard him say we're going to close public comment. Comment, not the hearing. You have to oh, open ah, it. <clears throat> gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. All right, so we're going to open the public hearing, which I thought, I guess I missed. <laughs> We did that at eight or seven fifty four. We got comments from seven different people. And now it's going to us to discuss in the public meeting. All right, so we're gonna bring it back up to the planning commission, close the public hearing. Is that good? That'll work. Okay. All right, up to the back up to the planning commission. Any Comments from planning commissioners. Mr. Andrea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For, uh, for staff, um, there's been a lot of reference to the master plan. Uh, I just want to make sure from what I see, the master plan was last updated in September of 2021. Does that sound correct? November of 21, yes. November of 21. Okay. So consideration went into it um, for some time. How long did that process take for the update? So that was started before I started work here back in probably 20, well, that's right. <laughs> Some years before. 20, that. It was 2020 20, to yeah, roughly 2020, 2019 to 2020, and then it was reopened again, um, and Giffels was brought back on board to, um, there were some things that were done by my predecessor and sure. the previous uh, planning consultant that weren't uh, in line with what the township board felt okay. was necessary. Um, and then it was public hearing were done again to reopen it back up and public comments were taken. And um, we are where we are because of that um, master plan that was approved. So there's there, there's quite a bit of input that goes into the master plan. Several years. So, so not just um, consideration of overnight contending to what the future land use might look like. Yes, that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. In your, in your view, knowing what the future land use map has and supported by the master plan, would you consider this spot zoning? No. Okay. Um, and then if consideration was given for rezoning to an NC adjacent to the, to the zoning for, um, of, what so many of the citizens stood up and talked about. Could you talk a little bit about what the buffering requirements or some of the requirements that would be instituted if it ever came to the site plan? 
So I've had conversation with a few of the residents that are in the audience today, and we've discussed that there is the existing residential is already there. Mm -hmm. When there's existing residential and commercial or any other zoning comes in, we're, we as a board and myself are tasked with making sure that the residential is not disturbed as much as possible. We have standards for setbacks. We have standards for the amount of landscaping and or berming and or walls that would have to be put in uh, adjacent to residential. Uh, parking lots, lighting, all of that goes into my job as the planner um, to make sure that the residents are not as disturbed as much as possible. Sure. And so, and what we're talking about, and what we're, impacted, yes. Yeah, so, and what we're talking about is actual recommendation that would be made to to a township board, and then even after that, if it moved forward, then you're talking about site plan and instituting all of these requirements after that. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. One last one last question, Mr. Chair, um, for the applicant, if if don't mind, I, I think you had mentioned, um, Mr. Rising, you said. Um, I believe you have uh, the broker here that was here. Would would mind yes, Mr. Manson. question? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Jim. I am Jerry Mansour, Mansour Realty, and um, I am representing both as a broker and a consultant to the owner. So, question that I have. Thank you. Is mm -hmm. When was this property purchased, or, or is it under contract for the, with the applicant right now? Um, around 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long was it on the market for at that point? You know, I I'm not sure. Quite a while. But the year. I'm, I'm sorry. You're saying before we purchased it. Before the purchase. Um, a very long time. Was it, it was actively being marketed and sold, or was it just kind of a passive thing? That it was a passive, sold? more so. Okay. That's, that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Yancho? Um, to, to Mr. Smith, uh, isn't master planning regulated by state law? Yes, sir. Every five to ten years, we are required by the state to update our master plan and our future land use map. I just, Mr. Anderson. yeah, a couple of um, you, you covered just about every question I had, so thank you. Um, but I was going to talk about just the area. I, I too have lived in Grand Blanc all my life, 50 years here, grew up at the corner of uh, Holly Road and Cook Road, right in that area. And I've seen a lot of change. And the master plan was very different back then, and the zoning map was very different back then. Um, township grows. One thing I remember as a kid is when Genesis Hospital was built and how much that changed dynamic from Holly Road being two lanes with a gravel shoulder and just a few houses and trees to what we have now. But Genesis also brought in massive amounts of jobs to the area. It brought in other businesses. It brought in additional tax revenue. And it was all overall, it was a great thing for the township, I think, a great thing for the area, for southern Genesee County. Um, so in reference to that map, we do have to revise that. We do have to update that. And it's done every four years, as you said, I believe, by the state requirements and the township puts a lot of planning into that that's not just something that's put on the agenda and rubber stamped there's a lot of consideration that goes into that um, I recently had to um, sitting on this board have to approve a gas station a half mile from my house I didn't want to do it but zoning maps and so forth have changed and sometimes different land uses are allowed so I guess I kind of wanted to point to that I use Genesis as just an example but there's multiple businesses that have moved into Grand Blanc developments that have happened truly benefit our community. They bring in the tax revenue, they bring in jobs, and those jobs bring in people, the people that you know, live and work in here and they eat the restaurants that we build, so. Mr. Bush? Yep, I'm, I'm gonna agree with Larry that uh, Mr. Andre stole some of the thunder, uh, <laughs> some of the questions, but uh, one question I guess I have is for the applicant, and hearing the concerns of the residents here tonight, um, and, and going through the list of neighborhood commercial and the possibilities of what could be built on the site. Yes, sir. Um, during your presentation, I heard you say uh, home for the elderly, which I know that is, is really needed, not in just our community, but in every community. Um, have you considered a conditional rezoning for a elderly home facility, which I think if possibly, if that's, that's what you're looking for, 
that would alleviate maybe a lot of problems that the residents have because they would know what's going on. No, we, we had never sought a conditional rezoning. Okay. Yeah, never, never even considered it because it's almost two separate properties. If that pond and then the, the wetland in between almost makes it two separate properties. We don't know what a real user would want on that property. I, for the life of me personally, I can't see a party store on that property. Who wants to have a party store 400 feet off the road? You know, or on the other side of a pond. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, and that's why those sort of uses, while they technically would be allowed on the property, just don't make any sense from a practical viewpoint. There's no signage. There's no room for signs. You know, nobody's going to go that far back. You know, to, to pick up a Monster Energy drink. So, no, we had never sought a conditional zoning. Thank you, Mr. Yancho. Yeah, I'd like to tag along with Mr. Anderson. Uh, I grew up in the Baldwin Road area, and uh, we moved there in 1963. And um, most of the land where all the residential subdivisions are, where the, all the development, retail, industrial, those were all farmlands when I moved here. And, and that includes the subdivisions and where Genesis is. You know, the, our, our township is growing as, as we'd like it to grow. Uh, but we're trying to control the growth in a reasonable manner. Um, but yeah, it's it's changed tremendously in the past 60 years, and it'll continue to change, um, as all areas in the state of Michigan has. Um, just wanted to um, give that information to the township, to the citizens. Oh, Ms. Ms. Coulter, was there um, I must say I'm really conflicted on this. Um, I. The property to the north is south, east, and west are currently um, zoned as um, residential property. And uh, I know the, the um, future land use map has changed the um, one of those parcels to neighborhood commercial. Um, and uh, I have some concerns about that. I realize that the applicant can't commit, or the, could put any could could put uh, any neighborhood commercial use allowed in that property. I mean, even though now they're telling us they're kind of thinking about a um, what would be a multi sort of multi-family residential if it was like a senior care home. Um, I understand that like. Mr. Yancho's former property, the um, Jim Pines Farm, which is farther to the west on Baldwin Road. Yes, that's closer to the expressway and it makes sense to, you know, change that to commercial. But the, at, at the current time, most of the rest of Baldwin Road is residential, um, including the, there's a multi-family, I guess there's a um, um, multi, what is it? Medium, fam medium density, density multifamily residential. Um, so, uh, but um, I know I was on the planning, I've been on the planning commission quite a while. I was on the planning commission when we adopted the current zoning, or the, um, the zone, um, the future land use map and uh, the master plan. Um, fortunately, I don't remember if this issue came up or not when we looked at the future land use map. But uh, um, i just not sure that this is appropriate for uh, um, rezoning, particularly because we're, it's surrounded by residential property, um, which is my basic concern. Thank you for your comments. Uh, you always have good comments for us to consider. I've been on this board, it's hard to believe, but I think you now it's over 23 years. Um, one of the things that throughout the years we're presented with different developments that, and we evaluate them and, and look at what controls we can do to get the best development that we can. In some cases there are certain things, this is how it's zoned, whatever, you can't do anything very little, I should say. 
the part that I struggle with this one is that we really don't know what they're going to do. Um, and how do we pr protect the residents if we don't know what they're going to do? Um, you know, we can't say, well, we've got to put in a 600-foot buffer. Or we, don't even, we don't even know. And a lot of that, we only have certain controls. I'm struggling a little bit, I guess, as this group is. And I'm just trying to, and I, go ahead, Mr. Smith. I just want to read the summary of what the neighborhood commercial district is intended for. The district is established to accommodate retail businesses and services to meet the day-to-day -day convenience, shopping, and service needs primarily for neighbor, or nearby residential neighborhoods in correspondence with the township master plan. And to your other point, you do have the power to add conditions on any site plan. I don't even know what to add at this point. Yeah, I may, guess. may I ask a question? Yeah. Rezoning this does not permit how it's going to be built. They're still going to have to come to us with a plan. Yes. Say this is the building, this is our post parking lot, this is our post setback, to which at that point we can say, okay, we want to see additional buffer here, we want to provide that. Um, so approving this tonight does not give the developer carte blanche to build whatever they want within that district. That still has to come to us for approval. Yes. Okay. Yes and no, I guess there's, um, if, well, if it's not, it's not us, but the township board, we make a recommendation to the township board to approve the zoning request and it happens, you're going to have a lot less say in what can be done mm -hmm. in the future. And I guess it's tough to just walk and say, okay, I give up my control now without knowing what might go here. <clears throat> but I mean, we've we've had some in the past, not very often, but occasionally, uh, where someone wants to come in. Okay, now that we got a rezone, here's what we really want to do. And, I mean, Walmart is one of those. But <laughs> can say whether that's good or bad. But Mr. Bush, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, for our planning consultant, or sorry, for Jeremy. Um, looking at the future land use map, there's a large swatch of neighborhood commercial plan for the future. Um, how many parcels is that do you know put together? I know this is just two parcels tonight, and if if they were to be rezoned, it would be the first two in an, in an, in an area that we had future land used as residential or as commercial. So I don't know exactly how many, but for the residents, how many parcels would there be if everything was rezoned as the map showed? Roughly 13 to 15. So this just happens to be the first. Correct. Okay, thank you. I guess I'm, I'm wondering to a certain degree for the applicant, you know, hearing what you've heard, is there anything that you might consider, I mean, a conditional rezoning is something we can't tell the conditions, though, is my understanding. We also need a site plan for conditional rezoning. Yeah. I mean, that, that's well, we that's a possibility. Um, I, I just, and I guess it's both ways where, where I would like to see something somehow. I don't know how that is. It might give me a little more assurance that we're not going to, end up getting something rammed down our throat that we don't want without knowing what it is. I guess, George. And, and neither do we, frankly. Um, Mr. Odlin is not a developer, okay? He's, never, he's owned some office buildings that were built um, on Saginaw Street across from the tank plant, um, but he never developed offices or developed anything and uh, had some businesses around here, but it's not what I would call a developer. I think we're looking for this zoning. We would like to market this property as NC. And I've always thought when somebody comes in for NC or I mean, whenever it comes to a site plan, you people have never been shy about telling them what you think about their site plan. 
You've never been shy about saying, here's what we're going to require of you. If you really want to do this, this is what you're going to do. And they may say to you, but that's not in your ordinance. And I've heard the retort, maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong. Maybe it is an ordinance. Maybe I see an ordinance. Um, the Walmart, for example, is, that, that's, I, I think, you're slightly incorrect on that. That was rezoned to PUD at the same time. That wasn't rezoned and then somebody snuck in a Walmart on you. That was the original plan. A large building there, a large building next door. I recall that one very well. So it's a little different. Um, that was actually rezoned to accommodate a Walmart. I, I remember the meetings. Um, but rezoning, this is, this is a straight rezoning, which your ordinance anticipates. Remember, before the Zoning Enabling Act changes, there was no thing, such thing as conditional rezoning. And everybody would always come here and tell you, but here's our plan to do that. And of course, they couldn't live up to it because they couldn't promise that. Under the new Zoning Enabling Act, or the Zoning Act, Michigan Zoning Act, they changed it to allow conditional zoning. But for the most part, um, I think most rezonings are straight rezonings. Conditional rezonings are more the exception than the rule. Yeah. I know what you're saying. And I completely understand what you're saying, and I appreciate what you're saying. The thing is, the master plan process was not, I think as Mr. Andre said, it wasn't something that we thought of overnight. You have these visioning sessions over two years. If you really read the master plan, it's not just, you didn't come and say, well, where do we want to draw lines on a future land use map? There were, there were everything that the, the planner went through at that time, I mean, it's this thick. And, uh, it's, it's thought out. Okay, you can disagree with it. Certainly disagree with it if you don't like what came up. But it was a result of meetings with the public, the visioning process, the public telling the planning commission and the board what they wanted. And that was certainly taken into consideration. And I know people who had properties where the master plan classification was changed and they were upset that it was changed because it was a lesser use than what they wanted on their property and some had a greater use than what they had had before. So this is one of those things where this planning commission and the board, the township, and the citizens of the township, the residents of the township, thought through and said, you know, in the end, on balance, this is what we want here. I didn't get a vote. You had an opportunity for input, and you were here for that, right? Yes. Oh, no, I, no, I didn't come here for that, actually. I've got a question for you, yeah. then. Yeah. We have six planning commission members. Well, I guess I'm going to go here first to Mr. Smith. Yeah. How many yes votes are required from the Planning Commission to send it to the Township Board with a recommendation? Is that five? Is it a majority? It's a majority. So today you would need four. Yeah. And we're missing one. I get it. We're missing three, actually. Three. Missing three, okay. That my, so that my question was, are you looking for us to, to make a recommendation this evening with six members here? You know, I, um, I mean, it's, you'd like us to take action on this, I guess. I, I, w I would love you to take action, but um, we're missing three members. Um, I, I haven't heard anything from them. I don't know how they would vote. Um, let, me, let me see what the applicant wants to do, and I'll, I'll stand up and say yes or no, thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I'm also conflicted on this decision, and, and this is my second stint on the Planning Commission, and I also served on the Township Board for a couple terms. Um, and one thing that I was always told or taught during a rezone, we have these 13 criteria that we have to go by. And if these 13 criteria are met, then pretty much, you know, I'm almost bound to say yes, because that's what the law is. We are, we are bound. I'm still conflicted, because I think these criteria were met, and the future land use map that was spent for two years, and I wasn't on the board or this board when that was done. It, it, it's hard to say no, and it's hard to say yes. So yes, I, I think we're all conflicted here. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't but I think. I don't know that I'm against anything here. I'm just not sure yet. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because, exactly. you know, we've always, uh, I chair the Site Plan Review Committee, which you're also on, sure. and that's one of the things that we look at when we have a request 
for a new building to go on a particular piece of property, we review that with how it meets the current ordinance, and we also look at any nearby residents and how they might be impacted and what we can do. Some cases so we can't do very much. In other cases, there's quite a bit of latitude to where we can work through that. And right now, I really don't know. So. I, I wish this was a special use. I really do. <laughs> Help you guys out a lot, OK? Then you could, you could whip us, OK? <laughs> but, but it's not. It's just a straight rezoning. I wish it were a special use. Uh, and I wish that whoever decides to develop this property asks for a special use. Um, because once again, as, as long as you're you have, I think, two sets of criteria in your ordinance. They're sort of the general for all special uses. Then for specific uses, you have specific special use requirements that don't apply to other ones. So once again, that, that's, that's your best control. And I hope that whoever does it is a special use. But your, your point is well taken. Um, there, there's three people who should probably have a vote. If we're going to do this the right way, let's get the full planning commission here. And you know, I don't know if that happens ever. I'm not really sure. But yeah. Um, if it, you know, let's, let's get some more, let's get some more people here. And, um, uh, once again, they say two heads are better than one or nine are better than six, hopefully. So you would like for us to table this? Reason? Let's table it. And let, let me, let me think about, let me think about some conditions. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I cleaned the earwax out today. I hear you loud and clear. Okay. Is there any information that the applicant could bring before this board that would move your decision one way or the other? Well, I mean, maybe outside of a site plan. No, I, yeah, I, just a small thing that maybe the residents could help with, just plotting where their homes are at. We've heard some people give some some uh, in, input, and one thing was important to this person, something else was important to another. It just would be generally good to know where the residents are. I don't know if that's... Yeah, I mean, if, for instance, if, if NC said, yeah, I could put a dispensary in, we said, no, no dispensary, that's for sure, But even though it doesn't. But if it had something like that, that we could eliminate some of the uses, like Mr. Bush suggested, um, and his gray beard tell me there's some wisdom there's over there. Okay, so maybe, maybe we can do some of that. Let's, let's yeah, cut out some something. uses rather than say a specific, a specific use. Because there's certain uses that should probably not be on this property. Yeah. I'm not the only one, Mr. Yancho. Yes, I uh, I have I live on two acres in the township, and I also have access to the wildlife, the turkeys, the deer, everything in my yard. There's nothing behind me but but undeveloped property with large trees. Um, but as I see our job here, it's to represent all the landowners. In Grand Blanc Township, we, we can't re represent a few landowners. We have to consider the entire population of the township and the township's good. And so I also have to consider the rights of the person who owns this piece of property. It's currently zoned residential, but I don't think it can be used as residential. I, I don't think it has uh, any means for him to realize any uh, type of remuneration for this parcel unless it was to be some sort of a higher elevation, higher usage than residential. May I, may I ask a question I, I, through, the, through the commission to um, Mr. Smith? If under its current zoning, is there a cumulative um, feature that would allow us to put, for example, apartments in there? No. So it only starts at the higher, like the, the office and the <laughs> commercials, that it goes down to the cumulatives. Residential has, depending on the residential, you have yeah. R1 through R4, then you have multifamily, low, medium, and high, yeah. and then you start with office, office, and then you have... I, I know that those, those office uh, categories and the NC allow them to down zone use, but not the residentials don't have that same feature. No, because they're very specific on what can and can't be done. Because I, I just hadn't read the ordinance about those yet. Everyone. There's setback requirements in each one. There's um, square footage requirements, lot size requirements. So each one of those residentials are different. Yeah, the, the thing about neighborhood commercial that, that I like, as opposed to, for example, asking to put some sort of high density multiple in there, is 
um, it's open eight to ten hours a day. Okay, at, at night it's quiet. That's that's a complaint in some areas. Some places like to have activity all around the clock. Uh, they, they like that feel. I don't. Okay. But. And I don't know that I have any problem with what might be built here. I just don't know what. Man, that's, ne that's neither do the I. biggest thing that I am. Neither do I. All, I'm, all we're doing is your ordinance says, look, tell us about these 13 things and how you satisfy them. I think we've done it, and it's, um, it, you know, and is it consistent with the master plan being one of those 13? Have you satisfied all these? The answer is, I think, yes on all those, and it's, it becomes a head scratcher, and you say, so what? It just, it's very difficult, and I know what you're saying, okay? And it was at, maybe it was at the master plan level that things happened. But it's master plan for this, and we're just doing, I think, as Mr. Hoffman said one day, what you're essentially telling us to do. Okay. If, the, if the property next door, or the one furthest from the neighborhood. So from my standpoint, if I knew a little bit more of what we might be able to do, like you said, in the way of conditions to help protect existing yes. residents, that's one thing. Feel better about. You're very subtle, Mr. Gillings. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I just want to make a comment. Um, I know when we have these um, zoning change petitions, there's a number of criteria that we're required to look at, and the, the future land use map is only one of those, you know, issues that we look at. So just because it's on the future land use map for um, neighborhood commercial doesn't require us to, you know, uh, prove the, the zoning change, basically. You have to look at other factors, too. And um, like I say, one of my concerns is that it's currently surrounded by residential property. And uh, also, I know that you're not, if, it's, if, it, if it is rezoned as neighborhood commercial, then that would allow the developer to develop it in for any use that's permitted in neighborhood commercial. And we would not be able to say, we would rather have you do this use rather than the other use. If it meets the requirements for a neighborhood commercial, they could put in any type of development that met the requirements of neighborhood commercial. Um, and uh, we couldn't say, well, why don't you develop it in some other permitted use that we would thought would be more appropriate. Mr. Chair, can I just, I want to, last questions for, for me. If, if I could, to the planning consultant, Jill, you, you represent a lot of different communities and you see a lot of different things. How many, how many cases of rezoning do you see that don't have a use attached to it? Or, you know, that just come in for a straight rezoning as opposed to having a use associated with it? Oh, there's a good number of them that come through with straight rezoning. So this is not uncommon that no, you see in other communities? No. Okay. Okay, and then how many conditional rezonings typically do would you see? Is that used very little anymore? Depends on what the what the end user really wants to do with the sure. property. Um, I think we've seen them here over the years. Um, we had that one that had the condition of the re specific restaurant that had mm -hmm. to be part of it that didn't happen, and then they lost their rezoning, and so they mm -hmm. had to revert and come back again. Um, that was several years ago. Um, it really does. It depends on what what the use is. It's something that's lesser associated with, and so the straight rezoning it's, is, it's is really pretty if somebody typical. knows exactly what they want to do. It sounds like in this case um, that potentially the owners of the property are just exploring their options, looking to do something, um, perhaps want to make it available mm -hmm. to be sold again. Um, and we just want to have all those things open. Sure, sure. And, but and that, I, that's something typically you see in other communities as well? Mm -hmm. okay. It is, and, and it's part of what makes it hard, as you've all been articulating, right. to, to make a decision on that because it is kind of an open case. There could be a variety of options um, that are available, and you know that you've got, um, for the permitted uses, as you've all pointed out, if they meet the requirements of the ordinance, the 50-foot rear setback to the residential um, the certain buffer requirements against residential, and they meet all the other standards, you have to approve it. Um, you can ask, 
And Mr. Isaac has always been good at uh, accommodating is the, the, for the properties that he has represented in the past um, to the extent that they're able, the requests of the Planning Commission. Um, but you really have, you do have a little bit more um, ability to, to place conditions when it's a special land use, um, as you've noted. Right, Thank I, you. And if I was presenting before the Planning Commission and Township Board, I personally would like to have more people here. That's why I brought it up. That, you know, because if you get a couple people that decide they're against it, then. All right. So are you asking for us to table action? <laughs> An administrative question, if if we were to table, can we table to a specific number of planning commission members being present, or do we have to table to a specific date? I wouldn't put a number on it because depending on the month, you don't know who's going to be there. Yeah, but I, don't, I don't know how that would work. Next available. I would say next available date. Yeah, next available meeting. So, I mean, because... If there's more, like Mr. Rizek said, if there's something that comes up and maybe the, this, they've got more information and they're going to bring something, it may not be March, maybe it's April, maybe it's May. Who knows when this could be? But um, in any case, we can make a condition of your tabling that we send out 300-foot notices again if the, the residents um, wish. What is the notice requirement? 300 feet from the property. As far as dates. You don't need to. You don't need to attach yeah. a date to it. Just you do don't it. have to. You have closed. He's asking how far in advance. Oh, it's 15 days. The, the, the 300 foot notices go out 15 days in advance. And would that require a public meeting then? The next one would be a public me meeting because you have had an, the, uh, the necessary intro meeting, yes. Well, I'd like to see some more information from the developer side, and I would like to see a more clear indication of exactly how a proposed development or rezoning might impact the, the current residents that are affected. So I'd like to make a motion to table until next, the next day. available meeting. I'll support that um, with a friendly amendment okay. at the applicant's request. Sure. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking you to do it. He asked us to do it. So okay. At his at the, request, at the, yes, at the so, applicant's so, request, I would like to make that motion. If I may, through, uh, through the commission to Mr. Smith, public meeting, but the public comment is closed, correct? That's what I was just going to ask. I think we've had public comment. You did. You opened and closed your public hearing, and you had your comment. And so because you've, do, you've done that, you wouldn't need to do that again. But if certainly. I change my, if I add conditions, then there's public comment again. Correct. There would be. Well if you did that, it would be a new proposal, but you are correct that it is a public meeting, and so you are all welcome to attend. You're welcome to attend every meeting if you'd like. Please. Um, well, and just to that, to further that, we have public comment prior to, so if we're not going to open public comment at the zoning case, you can certainly speak to what you need to speak with before. You can, you can invite public comment if you would wish, but uh, you also might suggest that the applicant meet with the neighbors if you haven't done so already, um, because that might help clarify some things on their end as well. I've always wanted to go to Dr. Pack's house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a motion in front of us. Motion was, i got to refresh my memory. Motion, I believe, was Mr. Mr. Gable until the next available, available meeting at the applicant's request. Okay. Do we want 300 foot notices to go out again if this doesn't come back in March? Yes. Yeah. Um, I thought it would be no. Because it's if we, required. it's not required, but if they don't, this, let's just say this is April, I have no statutory regulations or requirements to re notice the residents of when the next meeting where this would be on. That's why I'm asking. This is such a hot button it's item. Something we can do unofficially. I mean, it's on our website. All the agendas. I'd rather do it unofficially. Is... And just, we didn't ask, but I'm going to offer my opinion anyway. That um, I think it's probably not good practice to start noticing for things that you don't need to, because then 
it's just it's an ex added expense for the township. Um, and so, but the residents know that we've been talking about it, and so they're encouraged to follow on the website. I think there's a place where you can sign up, is there not? Or at least there used to be, where you'd get a, you can get the meeting agenda sent to you, I believe. I don't think that's if right. you don't have that anymore, but you would just look at it like the week before. The, they, the Planning Commission always meets the first Thursday of every month. And so the week before that, just check the website and you'll see whether the item is on the agenda. Is the agenda posted on the board outside the building? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. I think I'd like to that's on. To vote on this item. So we have a motion by Mr. Yancho to uh, I don't know, what do we say? We're going to table this table, at the applicant's <laughs> request. A table this uh, rezoning request, support by Mr. Bush. All right. Everybody ready to vote? Yeah. All those uh, in favor of the motion to table, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We're potion. <laughs> We're, I can't even speak this. Yeah. Um, we are going to table this until next available date. The next earliest date would be... The next available date would be the first Thursday in March, I believe is the 7th. So it just all depends whether the... It's going to depend on the applicant. It's, yeah, the all depend on the applicant, applicant information or not. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. okay. Thank you for some good discussion. And we'll allow you a couple minutes if you'd like to leave and... Watch the news or whatever at home. Uh, give you a couple minutes and then we'll move on with it. Why we got a brief moment here? So I just thought I'd bring up to you, the board is uh, I don't know if y'all got the grand blank view today, mm -hmm. but in the grand blank view on the grand blank section, the front page is a great article about pathways. Yeah. I found it interesting. Yeah. Uh, the township secured a one point four million dollar grant. Wow which is quite impressive to build a pathway. And it's gonna go, I believe, from the Cook Road and Embury um, intersection all the way to Embury and Grand Blank, where it'll meet up with the current pathway that's already there. Cool. And if you combine that with what's built out at Genesis Health Park in that area, the new Baldwin Road, I think you can pretty much go, and correct me if I'm wrong, you can pretty much go from Genesis Hospital now all the way to Greasy Bicentennial Park on a pathway. You know, Larry, as, as good as that is, is there money for future maintenance of that pathway? No, there's not. So it's gonna be another pathway that's gonna be dilapidated every, every, in five years. Every city I've seen that has pathways, and a lot of them have been there a lot longer than that, are maintained and still beautiful. They're, they're kept up. At, and at our dime. I mean, it, well, on, on the face, you're right, it's great. But on the backside, it's taxpayer money being spent where we shouldn't spend it. Can we have everyone that wants to leave move out the doors? We'll close the door so we can move on with the meeting. Hmm. So, text amendment discussion is the next item up. Uh, let me wait till Jill gets Jill back in back. here and see if she wants to do the text, the text, uh, tech village discussion, or if she wants to do. Oh. <laughs> I appreciate you staying. Typically, we look at a bunch of empty chairs. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So there's text amendment discussion on here, and there's also tech village discussion. Do you want to do those? The tech village one is pretty is is not necessarily an in depth. Unfortunately, sorry to disappoint oh. you. Right. It's not, it's just, <laughs> but please stay. No, please stay. Um, it was a follow up from the presentation that we did. Um, the kind of the refresher on tech village at the end of our conversation. Several of you asked, I think, what happened with the examples that we showed in the slideshow. So we just did a little bit of research to find out what's been going on in those areas. So I just have sort of a recap. And I can send it to you also if you would prefer, and we can move on to the next item. I, it's Mr. Yacho wanted to 
Yeah. Hear what you had. So. All right. Where, where else are we at on our agenda, Mr. Smith? We have two other text amendment discussions. Yeah. Okay. One Very of which, exciting. well, one of which is planting. So I know Mr. Yancho will definitely, definitely want have that. We could start talking about the parking one. Yeah, if you want. Um, and I think this is so. This is a, a question that came up. Um, you've had a couple of site plans recently for uh, light industrial warehousing. And as you've noticed, and we've stated several times over the last however many years, wow, it seems like we're requiring a lot of parking for these uses that just don't seem to need it. So in a lot of cases, the applicants have asked for deferred parking. And so they've had sites that are large enough where they're able to design that deferred parking area. Planning Commission has been able to grant that. Um, but I think that you've asked the question, is, is our standard too high? Is there something else that we should be looking at? Um, so we put the uh, memo together that kind of outlines that, yes, it could get excessive. Um, but, oh, oh, no. <laughs> He's hurry up and talk about the landscaping. Hurry up and talk about the landscaping. <laughs> I'll make a motion. So we're done with the, the landscaping, landscaping ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's a couple of different approaches that we could take. One is the sort of the version that you have now, where you've got the employee, um, the parking spaces per employee, or the parking spaces per square footage, or a combination of those. Um, you can modify that. We've given you a couple of examples of places that they're sort of all over the, the place, really, the range, um, what they're requiring. I think probably the, um, the Rochester Hills, the one per 1,700 square feet, is probably more accurate in that it's a, it would result in a fewer number of spaces, which I think is helpful. Um, I think you could potentially do a combination of those things still with your peak employees, um, but maybe not say that greater, which is whichever is greater. Um, it, we know that with automation that we don't have as many employees at industrial type facilities as we used to, which is where those old standards came from. Um, and some of our warehousing things, we just don't need that kind of staffing either. Um, so it's it's there's room to move those numbers around. Um, and on the other hand, you still do have the deferment at your disposal to use when you've got a proposal that comes to you that, that says just we don't really feel like we need all this parking. <coughs> and it could be that you even do a combination of those in the ordinance where you say this is the requirement, but you're only required to build half of that now. And, and then you're not making somebody um, just do it, and then they just do it because that's what the rules say, because some people do that, um, that you suggest, you know, we don't have to do these giant parking lots anymore if you don't feel like it's, if it's excessive. I think with the industrial, a lot of times, you know, we had a site plan we saw today, storage mm -hmm. building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have... No, You're not going to have 40 cars in the parking lot? No. Yeah. I think the comment was that the people that work in the manufacturing facility don't want to walk to the warehouse. <laughs> they, so they put parking in front of it so yeah. they can drive. The reason they can drive the block Seriously. and go get to it. Yeah. You put in like a bike path? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's all paved. They could essentially drive. They, they could bike it. The, the alternative is you could just let the market say how much parking it wants mm -hmm. and not require anything. Go ahead. Uh, I have just... This is just my food for thought looking at all these site plans. It seems like on the ones that we deferred, we always went back to the employees on peak shift. So if we said something, th this is just my two cents. You, you folks have the ultimate say in what you guys want to see. But number of employees on peak shift plus 10%. That would cover any, if they had a meeting hall or if they had you know, people from outside of that company come in. Or we go with, like Jill said, if they say they only need 50, we add on another 10% just so we feel that there's an extra buffer. Um, the requirement with the square footage is, I believe, is where it gets 
out of hand very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would, I would highly suggest that we get away from that some way somehow. But what we ultimately land on is obviously up to to you folks. But I, I think employees on peak shift plus ten or twenty percent. Are you, Jeremy? Are you finding that it's just with industrial, or is it all? It's primarily with industrial. Some of the commercial things have issues, but in the past three, four years, we haven't seen the commercial have a problem because most of the commercial we've seen has been restaurants or retail where they that is the, the number of parking in commercial is definitely needed, especially if you have a strip mall where you have multi-tenant. Thank you. The case in point is the... Um, building the new building next to the Omega on Saginaw Street. Yeah. We tried to get a variance and we tried to get them more parking. That's all on, on my predecessor allowing heavier use tenants in there. Going forward, that won't ever be a problem, but they, if they would have had 10, eight to 10 more parking spaces on that lot, it would, the congestion would be um, much easier uh, for the residents and the, the taxpayer or the um, purveyors of the property I would be all in favor of as you suggest number of employees at peak mm -hmm. production plus 10 percent um, I can think of one development I'm aware of in another community where the township actually was a city it was a city pardon me required this developer to put in double the parking he needed he contested it still had to do it by their request and it sat vacant and then that property owner rented that portion of the parking lot to a car dealership who had excess inventory to store and boy you want to talk about seeing some ticked off neighbors yeah um so this this is a great way to control that as well you know so that that type of use from happening not saying what happened here but it's mm -hmm. don't don't require more than it's, than it's needed we would we the the car thing they'd have to come in for another that's not a site right 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 yet, that's whatever not but yeah it would that's, happen here right but no 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 that definitely would not happen here kind but. of things that that I have seen. Well, yeah, they would petition to say, hey, we've got all this extra parking. We can't do anything with it or we don't need to do anything with it. What else can we do with it? And we don't want to see a sea of parking spaces. We, we don't want to see that. And the last few big industrial buildings that we've seen, we've had to do deferred parking because they don't need the excess. And then if they do need it, they could come back and put it in later. But they have to put it on the site plan to start with to have it deferred that so way. The, the space it, is there. Space. So the spaces are there, but in the event that they don't ever need it, you'll never see it. And if they do need it, they come to me administratively and then I just rubber stamp it and away we go. Because it's already been approved by mm -hmm. the site plan review committee or the, the planning That's commission. That's exactly how I interpreted that presentation and I'm 100% in favor of. Okay. Yep. Mr. Bush. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just one comment. I, I, I like Mr. Smith's, uh, you know, Pete, employees at peak shift plus a certain percentage however i think last month last month or a couple months ago we saw a site plan um, a manufacturing facility where that was an issue because they had three shifts and if they have 100 employees and 10 percent of 100 is 10 so we require 110 spaces there's 100 people parked and 100 people coming in that's a problem so we have to be careful that that overlapping shift, the overlap yeah. shifts, especially if you're running two shifts, we're going to give them 10%, but now we're 90 spaces. We're not 90 because people are coming and going, but that's an issue. Mm -hmm. There is a provision in the ordinance that they can go over 20% on our required number. So if they need more parking, we're saying this is what we want to see, right. but they could do... 20% over and they'd still be within our guidelines. It'd just be another condition on a site plan that we do um, normally. That's true. Okay. Mr. Yancho. I'd like to see as little impervious surface as necessary in, for environmental purposes. Um, do we have an ordinance that says that, that people cannot park on non-paved areas or non-improved surfaces? In commercial, so, we, don't, we, don't, we don't allow... I mean, even in residential, outside of your motorhome, we don't allow you to park in the grass. So if an industrial or warehousing facility didn't have enough spaces and they were parking on the 
graph. You uh, call me and code enforcement will be, be out there tomorrow. <laughs> and so they would just go to the uh, site plan and they'd come back. They could prep that one would be um, case in point. There's the Nissan dealership on Holly Road. They're running out of parking spaces. I have a 10% leeway that I can do administratively. And that is one of those ones where they came in and petitioned. I did all the, the research on it. And the amount of parking spaces that they're asking for is under that 10%. So that was administratively approved. And there was a there was a senior housing development. I forget where it was. This was several years ago, where they needed more parking, and people were parking on the grass, and they did have to come in and try to figure out how they were going to design more parking spaces for that facility. But they did need more than what the requirement was. So, in answer to Mr. Bush's uh, question or remarks. Uh, uh, it would be on the uh, property owner, the factory manager, to maybe stagger the shifts so that people were leaving and coming at different times instead of 100% overlap. Mm -hmm. Assuming that they're involved in the site design <laughs> phase of the well, project, they, which they may or may not be. They were parking on the grass. Right, they would. I'm a little confused as to what items we've accomplished on the agenda here. Text amendment discussion. That's this one. That's this one. We're, we've got two. We've got this one, and then we've got the. Um, you got some direction. Landscaping. Bring us back something. Well, I guess do we? If you are interested in exploring that option. Yeah. The peak so. employee plus ten percent. Um, we can look at some of the other standards and make sure that there's um, some alternatives like the 20% extra that you can do um, with permission from the Planning Commission, the deferred parking, that those are all, that there's good um, Even question the 10% if, you if you think there's a different. Right, if it needs to be more. Yeah, right. if it, if it okay. needs to be 15, right. 20, whatever. I'd, rounder numbers are right. easier for me to, when I'm doing all these calculations, so 10, 20, 30, whatever it is, 15 gets a little odd sometimes, but. Yeah, 7.3. Yeah. yeah, right, let's do 11.24. Yeah. Um, I'm all in favor of pursuing that. Mr. So my one question. Go ahead. Uh, I, I think I think um, what uh, Giffel's put together is is really good. Where it sees the comparison with the other communities, and what I'm what I'm seeing quite a bit more in in the work that I am is there is a movement towards the number of employees. It really is because we're we're overparked for the most yeah. part. Mr. Yasha brought it up. We see too much undeveloped. Or the, too much of the property is, is taken up by unnecessary. What I, what I like, though, still is I like the blend of either or, okay, in that you might have a very automated, highly automated location that only has five employees for a 20,000 square foot facility, but you might also have a very intensive, um, labor intensive for that same use, and it might. It, you know, there might be a little bit of a balance. I, I just like the I like the idea of having the square footage, the option, mm -hmm. but I like the idea what Jill brought up is bump that square footage up. There's the 1,500 and, and 1,000 square feet. That's way too low. That needs to be that needs to be higher. So I like the idea of that, but I really think we should be more focused on the number of employees. I really I really think that's the continued trend. Thank you. You're, when you say Number of employees, you're talking more for manufacturing or industrial use, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but on, let's just say, let's just look, go back at warehousing. Yep. Yeah. It, you could only have 10 employees in a 100,000 square foot warehousing, and now we're going to say you need to have 200 parking spaces. No, I, I think you're maybe suggesting that it's. Somehow it's a blend of it. It's. I think it should be up to the applicant. Acknowledge. I, I think it should be up to the applicant to put forth whether they want to do it based on a square footage or an either or. So if they want to do it based on the square footage, based on their business, we don't know their business. We don't know their business model. So if they feel that they need more of the parking based on that, let them make that decision. If they, but in a warehouse situation, like you're saying, they have five employees for, then allow them to make the, the choice based on the, the um, number of employees. I think it's an either or. Pick, pick one. When the applicant makes the application, pick one. So, did you still want to cover something on uh, the tech village? Yeah, one more question. It's more towards Jill. If 
if it were to go, let's say we go for my suggestion and we don't do a blend mm -hmm. and let's say they wanted more, mm -hmm. like Mr. Andre was saying, that would have to be a variance then. Because well, that's, now well, that's where I was saying I want to look at the other sections, like the 120% maximum, is that does that make sense? If we're really reducing the amount of parking that we're requiring, is 120% the right number for this use? It might be for the other uses, but you know what I'm saying? So it could be yeah. we give some flexibility in this case for industrial and warehousing uses for people to provide more parking than what's required if we lower the requirement. So that we're not penalizing people if they say, you know what, I have, um, I got a big facility and I got people coming and going all at once, and I need more parking than what I what I have. And to not, I mean, okay. to be able to provide for that. I mean, yeah. you do because the planning commission can make that determination. Um, yeah. We'll bring you back some stuff next time. So did you want to speak to Tech Village or no? Well, do you want to do, do the want, other? You want to do the other ordinance first? Well, I think that that may be a lengthy discussion. Do, don't we have okay. a two-hour time limit? <laughs> I mean, well, the, the, I'm just the, tech village. the Tech Village thing is short. It's actually just an update on, and I can always email it to you too after. Um, but we just did a little bit of follow-up on the, and the actual, there was three uh, examples that we gave you in the, um, original Tech Village presentation, the West Michigan, Western Michigan Business Park, the Bosch facility, and the Prairie Estates. Um, the Bosch facility is there's really nothing to say about it. Um, uh, so the Western Michigan um, Business Technology and Research Park, they did, if you'll recall, that one was outside of Kalamazoo near Western Michigan. And it was a, um, uh, the beginnings of a research facility. I'm sorry, I'm a little distracted by all whatever is going on in there. Uh, it was um, 265 acres and um, a portion of the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Um, they actually expanded in 2019, and they have uh, a 55-acre site that was an expansion area. Um, their original site is at capacity. They have 40 different businesses, and they say that they've had about 1,400 jobs created because of that. Um, interestingly, none of the ones that we looked at appear to have a lot of spinoff development associated with them, but they are, have been, a couple of them have been pretty successful, um, and they are... Um, kind of taking the tax capture and putting it back into investments in that area. Um, so the Western Michigan business technology and research part has been pretty successful. Um, not so much the Bosch North America Research Center, the one in Plymouth Township. It really hasn't done much since 2016. Um, they did have uh, an impact to their number of people in their offices due to the pandemic. Um, so they're kind of, I think, struggling with filling that space. and. Um, not a, any real significant development um, spinning off of that since then. The other one that was uh, Hoffman Estates uh, in Illinois, the Prairie Stone Business Park, that one was 780 acres, and uh, they have had, they just had over in 2023, there was a large um, Sears headquarters site that was in this area, and they just sold it to uh, a data center facility, and they're going to build this massive data center there that they've noted has very few employees. Um, but they generate a lot of property tax revenue for the community, so they feel like that's a win, and it's uh, they're going to be demolishing all of the old buildings that are vacant. So they're feeling like it's a good development because it's cleaning things up, low demand on public services. Again, on the flip side, not a lot of jobs. Um, the business park itself still has some vacant lots and some vacant spaces to lease, so it, time will tell, I think, still, if that use is enough to generate some interest. Potentially, if there were revenues that came out of that, property tax revenues, and they can do some more enhancements or other incentives in there, they may be able to generate a little bit more activity. 
um, but kind of a mixed bag of, of results to report to you on that. So. Thank you. I think then the only other thing that we talked about last time was whether or not we should be looking at any amendments that might be needed to that. Um, and whether there was anything that we re were recommending. And I don't know that we've done that yet, and we haven't really had a chance to talk through that. So mm -hmm. if we do that, that'll be coming not to you next time, maybe after that. Thank you. Any other questions on that? I don't think so, unless anyone else has got some. <clears throat> what about committee reports? If we've got somebody that's not going to be here for a few months, is there something that we should be doing? You're referring to Miss Hugo? Yeah. So she gets the packets just like everybody else does. If she, if she wants to weigh in on something, she can email me, call me, uh, however she wants to do it. We can't do remote in. That's not allowed, unfortunately, um, which is too bad in this day and age with technology. But uh, it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, but if well, I, I'm presuming if there's something that's big that comes up like 1.4 million dollars and you'll let us know <laughs> yes oh yeah for sure well I we got a little more if you, if you like I just thought I'd just <laughs> no, sure I'm ready to just for you ready to okay, okay I just yeah. thought it was really <laughs> the, the other ordinance we have the landscape ordinance that we haven't discussed yet now I don't know yeah were you suggesting that we postpone that but, conversation that's what I was suggesting uh, my can I add to that? I, I would love to, Mr. Yancho is, is our landscape guru. Mm -hmm. So I would, if there, anything needs to be tore apart, you know, I'm not saying anybody else can tear it, can't tear it apart, but I'm just saying as our landscape guru, if you want to look through this and tear it apart and then yeah. send me a report, yeah. I'll forward it on to Jill and then for the next month we'll have That'd be great. more discussion yeah. on we it. Did, we That'd did have um, <laughs> our landscape architect kind of go through it too. It's going to be a binder. Uh, especially with the trees because he's, yeah. really, he's really good with the trees, but I'm sure you have much more. Oh yeah, I'm boy. Not, I'm not an expert. I'm not perfect. Yeah. Not well, perfect. we can even, if you want to have a call too, with sure. three of us yeah. or yeah. four of us with my, my team too. Yeah. <clears throat> We'd be happy to. Getting back to the last topic, what prevents us from having uh, digital meetings? The state law. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Nothing it's we can. It's not say. permitted. Nope. Right. Unfortunately, yeah. since right. COVID, right. for a short time. And it was, and it's it's. It was COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was temporary. Did did that work out statewide, or was there problems with it, or? I I think a lot of people liked it. Mm -hmm. um, there were, but there was a lot of places that aren't set up for it. Um, you know, there were pros and cons to it. I think it was really good for people to, um, you know, you do a lot as volunteers for your community. And to be able to have the, be sitting in your own comfortable home and, um, or wherever, which sometimes was one of the issues. Um, you know, I think that to the extent that that might have been attractive to younger volunteers, potential volunteers, uh, as we think about who are volunteering these days, um, that might have been something that was helpful. Um, but I think then there was a, a, a strong feeling of, you know, decisions of a public body should be made in the public setting really? with the public in well, attendance. We are public because are, are, are we broadcast right now? Yeah. It's recorded and then it's uploaded. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The only um, difficulty that I saw, sometimes it was hard to know was who was there. speaking yes mm -hmm. well if you require there's a way to require people to be have their camera on and be in front of the camera mm -hmm. yes i think you're speaking about when it was in this setting like everybody's sitting around the table and i remember several meetings of different communities where they had one camera at the back mm -hmm. and you had to recognize voices to be able to tell because you really couldn't see on those cameras who yes. exactly was talking but when you're all in the little box on Zoom, right. mm -hmm. um, it, yeah. I mean, I think, and every community kind of handled it. Some handled it better than others, but. Can you email me the uh, statutes? It's Open Meetings Act, I think, and the emergency provisions were for a certain period of time, and then when they expired, they were complete. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, we ready to move on to committee reports? I have none. You have none? We have a, um, 
ZBA. We do next we are, month. We, yeah, we will next month. First one in a long time. First one in over a year and a half almost. Wow, that's great. Yep. The only meeting we had for the ZBA last year was to be a doozy, officers, too. and that was it. Oh, really? Yeah. That speaks volumes to what we do here and these text yes. amendments. Yep. We're doing our job. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want to read my package. Right. Mm -hmm. Give us an update next month. So we don't have anything from Township Board. No, we did our, we had the site plan review committee meeting uh, earlier this evening. Still my thumb. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. There's a, there's a business in the township called MGA Re Research. Research. Mm -hmm. yeah. Adding two additions to their building, two like 10,000 square foot. Outbuildings. outbuildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, outbuildings. Cold storage. No utilities, just it's the building. Just metal buildings and. Yeah, there's so they not as much of anything. So it's storing two things. Putting them in, taking them back out again. I guess they're moving to the next building. Yeah. So it's more for, they're anticipating some research development. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason for building it. But that's next to Magna, or near Magna. Because mm -hmm. I went looking for the business. Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting at 9.01 p.m. Motion by Mr. Anderson, support by Mr. Yancho. Yes. Right. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. We are adjourned.